Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, today's topic is growth and the reproduction in the bacteria. So today we are going to understand that how do the bacteria reproduce. So most of the bacteria they reproduce by the process of the binary fission. So what is the process of the binary fission? It is basically the process in which the bacterium which is the single cell it divides into the two identical daughter cells and uh, this process basically uh, takes place when the DNA of the bacterium it divides into two and this division or this replication process is known as the binary fission. So the binary fission is the process in which one parent cells it divides to form the two progeny cells or the two daughter cells. So the bacterial cells that elongates and splits into the two daughter cells each with the identical DNA to, the, to death of the uh, parent cells. So uh, we can say that each daughter cell is basically a clone of the parent cell. So binary fission is basically a type of the asexual reproduction and this process it takes place in the single celled organism when the condition they are favorable for example there is the right temperature and the nutrients that are available from some of the bacteria for example the Escherichia coli they can divide for every 20 minutes it means just in the seven hours uh, the bacteria they can generate about 209715 bacteria so this is how quickly we can say that these bacteria they divide uh, into two equal size of springs So growth of the bacteria, it refers to the increase in the number of the bacteria. So number of the bacteria, they increases as compared to the uh, rather than the size of the bacteria. So bacterial size, it remains constant. Only the number of the bacteria, it will increase. And um, the population growth is therefore, it's very rapid. It's an exponential growth in which one parent cells, it divide into two daughter cells and then two daughter cells, they divide into four, then four into the A daughter cell and then into the 14 daughter cells. So at the first, the bacterial cell, it reaches its critical mass in its form in the cell component. The circular double stranded DNA of the bacteria it undergoes the replication and new complementary strands they are formed within the, these uh, bacteria which moves towards the different pores and uh, as a result of this the binary fission or the division of the bacteria it takes place. So the human beings they basically grow in the size. Uh, their growth it refers to the increase in the size from the toddler they become the adult and the from the adult they will go um, uh, into they will get old so in the human being they basically grow in the size while the bacteria they grow in the number whenever they divide they grow in the number form in the zero minute you can see uh, the, there is one bacterium uh, then uh, it will device to form the two bacteria in the 20 minutes as I told you as I give you the exa example of the Escherichia coli and within the next 40 minutes there are four bacteria and then they divide into the eight bacteria. So doubling time of different bacteria is uh, different for uh, each of the bacteria. Uh, for Escherichia coli the doubling time is 20 minutes and for Mycobacterium tuberculosis its doubling time is 18 hours and for Mycobacterium leprae the doubling time is uh, 14 days. So this doubling time is very important when we uh, grow the bacteria artificially in the, um, in the artificial media uh, to form the colonies and uh, to um, observe the, the, their colonies. This uh, doubling time is very important for uh, that, that how long we are going to place the uh, um, medias in the incubator. So this process of the binary fission in which one parent cells or the growth of the bacterial population it occur in the geometrical uh, manner it is known as the exponential growth or it is known as the logarithmic growth. Logarithmic growth is basically a constant cycle or the constant division of a generation from one cell it gives the two cells from two cells it gives the four cells and from eight cells and then they form the 16, 32 and so on. So uh, this time of the uh, required for this formation of the generation it is different for the different bacteria 
So the population of the bacterial cell it divide at a constant rate, and the total number of the cell they divide in uh, with each of the division. And uh, basically, uh, the number of the bacteria it depend upon or the division of the bacteria. It basically it is controlled by the all of the environmental condition. Uh, the doubling rate is uh, depend upon the uh, environmental condition, the temperature, and uh, the, um, the providers of the nutrients and the environmental pressure. It all these all things they basically uh, depend on the bacterial <coughs> growth. So this is the exponential growth of the bacteria uh, as uh, we make the exponents uh, in this case. So, so you can understand that uh, the exponent of the 2 is uh, two, uh, 2 exponent 1 is 2, 2 exponent 2 is 4, 2 exponent 3 is 8, 2 exponent 4 is 16 and 2 exponent 5. So it's basically the ex that's why it's known as the exponential growth uh, because the rate of the bacterial growth is in the form of the logarithmic form or in the exponential form. So, um, if we have um, one bacterium at uh, 8 a.m. in the morning uh, and it has a doubling time of uh, 30 minutes, uh, we take the example that it has a doubling time of the 30 minutes. So, at 8 a.m. we have only one bacteria. So, at 30 uh, with the exponential um, calculation, uh, you can calculate that at uh, 8.30 it's two bacteria, at 9 o'clock it's four, at 9.30 it's eight, at 10 o'clock it's 16. And um, if it's this exponential growth and its doubling time it goes on and if we take at uh, 8 o'clock again and it's 16 7, 7, 2, 1, 7. So you can see that the bacteria, if uh, the environmental conditions, they are favorable for the growth of the bacteria. So the number of this bacteria, it constantly increases and um, it will result into a large colonies of the bacteria. So we can uh, divide this growth cycle. Uh, the bacterial growth cycle is divided into four important stages, uh, the lag phase, the log phase, the stationary phase, and the uh, death phase. So most of the students, they forget that uh, uh, the lag phase, it's come first, or the log phase, it comes the first. So the most, um, uh, the one of the tip to uh, memorize it is uh, in alphabetically so uh, the a in the case of the lag uh, the a is uh, in alphabets a come first and o comes next okay then so um, so let's uh, um, begin with the uh, all of these let's study all of these phases one by one so uh, the first phase is the lag phase in the lag phase first i am going to explain you that uh, the curve or the bacterial growth curve uh, which is seen in the picture so the bacterial growth curve represent the number of the life cell in a bacterial population over a period of the time and uh, this bacterial growth curve is very important and um, bacteria they require some most of the certain conditions for their growth and these conditions they are not same for all of the bacteria and a bacterial population or the generation time or the time it takes for a population to get double it varies between the species and depends on how well the growth requirements are basically uh, they are uh, met so uh, the first phase is the lag phase um, in the lag phase, there is a vigorous metabolic activity take place, but there is no cell division. So it is the initial phase and it is characterized by the cellular activity, uh, but there is no growth. The small group of the cell, they are placed in a nutrient-rich medium that allows them to synthesize their proteins and other mole molecules necessary, which is required for their uh, replication. The size of the cell is going to increase, uh, but uh, there is no cell division. It takes place or it occurs in this phase. So you can uh, appreciate it in this um, growth curve that in the lag phase there is no metabolic activity and uh, there is no cell division it takes place in the lag phase. The next phase is the log phase and in which rapid cell divisions it takes place and it's also known as the exponential phase. So after the lag phase, the bacterial cell they enter into the exponential phase or the log phase. And this is the time when the cell are dividing by the process of the binary fission and dividing by the binary fission and doubling in the 
the numbers after each generation type so metabolic activity is high as the dna and the rna and the cell wall components and the other substances they are necessary for the growth are generated uh, during this process of this division so in this phase uh, the antibiotics and the disinfectants are very much effective and these substances basically they typically target the bacterial cells or their protein synthesis of the dna transcription and rna translation so most of the antibiotics for example the beta active antibiotics for example the penicillins they mostly act on this and uh, because the bacteria they are making their cell wall which is made up of the peptide to glycine the next phase is the stationary phase in this phase the nutrient they are going to deplete and the toxic product they are going to um, uh, accumulate so eventually the population growth they experience the in which uh, the population growth experience in the log phase they become uh, begins to decline as the available nutrients they become depleted and the waste product they are going to accumulate bacterial cell growth reaches a plateau or a stationary phase where the number of the dividing cells they get equal to the number of the time cell this is there is no overall population growth uh, so under the less favorable competitions competition for the nutrients it increases and the cells they become less metabolically active and uh, spore forming the bacteria they basically they are going to form the endospores in this phase and the pathogenic bacteria they are going to generate their uh, virulence factor which help them to survive this harsh conditions and they are uh, basically they are constantly consequently they are going to cause the disease Uh, the last phase which is the final phase is the death phase at the nutrients they become less available and the waste product they increases the number of the dying cells uh, they are continued continue to rise in the death phase the number of the living cell they decreases uh exponentially and uh, population growth experiences a sharp decline so um, as the uh, dying cell they lies or um, they break open they spill their uh, contents into the environment making these nutrients they available to the other bacteria so this help the spore producing bacteria to survive uh, long enough for the spore uh, productions and uh, these spores they are basically able to survive in the harsh condition of the death phase and uh, become growing bacteria when these uh, environmental condition they are uh, available or they are uh, according to their uh, growth or um, when the environment can the environmental condition they supports their life so bacteria like all of the living organism they require an environment that is suitable for their growth and the environment must meet their survival different factors that support the bacteria for example uh, their nutrients their oxygen their ph levels their temperature their light requirement so each of these factor uh, may be different for the different bacteria and they limits the types of the microbes and their population for their um, according to that uh, a uh, particular uh, population or the particular environment <clears throat> so on this uh, required basis of the um, uh, requirement uh, the bacteria they are classified into autotroph uh, autotrophic bacteria they are they are able to synthesize, synthesize their own food from the inorganic substances and they are further classified into photo autotroph and the chemosynthetic so from the photo you means light they are going, going to um, uh, generate their food or they are going to synthesize their food in the uh, presence of the light with the out the light they are not able to uh, synthesize their food and the chemosynthetic bacteria they are those bacteria which uh, require the chemical materials for to synthesize their food so photoautotrophic bacteria uh, they basically um, possesses the photosynthetic pigment and they utilize the solar energy for the production or for the production of their food while the chemosynthetic bacteria they manufacture the organic compounds from the inorganic and the raw materials on the other hand the heterotrophic bacteria are the bacteria uh, which are not able to manufacture their own food and they are basically uh, dependent on the external sources to manufacture their food um, and to um, survive in the environment so in this uh, in these bacteria they are symbiotic bacteria which have the mutual beneficial association with the other organism they give the benefits to the other organism and take the benefits from their host so such bacteria they derive the essential nutrient 
from the host and uh, because it's a mutually beneficial um, communication so they give the benefit to the host and they take the benefits from the host so the parasitic bacteria they are basically they occur in the body of the animals and in the basically the plants and they get the food from the uh, that, uh, that um, uh, animal or the from the body of the animals or the plant and they as a result they causes the disease in that uh, individual so um, it's beneficial for the bacteria but it's not beneficial for the host so uh, the temperature is important another important factor for the growth of the uh, bacteria uh, bacteria that grow in the cooler temperature mesophils they are basically the bacteria which grow at a temperature of 20 to 40 degrees centigrade and uh, most of these mesophils they, they basically thrive in the moderate temperatures so this is basically 20 to 45 um, degrees centigrade 68 to 113 degree Fahrenheit and these are called as the mesophils and these basically they are the bacteria which are the part of the human microbe which experience the optimal growth um, at or near the body temperatures. Uh, another important factors are the psychrophils and bacteria that grow in a cooler environment which the temperature is between 4 degrees centigrade and up to 35 degrees centigrade almost 77 degree Fahrenheit these bacteria basically prefer these temperatures and they grow in the cooler environment extreme psychrophil they are thrive in the temperature below 0 degree centigrade up to or the 32 degree Fahrenheit it can be found in the places such as arctic lakes and the deep ocean waters then the last is the uh, thermophiles. Thermophiles they best grow in the hot temperature about um, 50 to 80 degrees centigrade, uh, 122 to 176 degree Fahrenheit, and can be found in the hot springs and geothermal soils. And uh, bacteria that um, favor extremely hot temperatures, they are known as the hyperthermophiles. In this graph, you can see the effect of the temperature on the growth of the bacteria. Uh, you can see the growth rate and the temperature at which the bacteria grows. So psychrophiles mesophils thermophil and the hyperthermophils so an other important factor for the bacterial growth is the ph uh, acidic environments have the ph values uh, that are less than 7 and the neutral environment they have the values uh, near or uh, at the 7 and the basic environment they have the values uh, which is greater than the 7 so uh, bacteria that are acidophils they basically thrive in the areas where the ph is less than 5 uh, which is an optimal growth value which is close to a ph of 3 so these uh, microbes can be found in the locations such as the um, hot springs and in the human body for example the lactobacillus it is present in the acidic areas for example the vagina of the female so majority of the uh, bacteria they are the neutrophils and they grow best with the ph which is close to the seven and uh, for example the helicobacter pylori is an important example of the neutrophil that lives in the environment of the stomach and it survives by excreting the enzyme that neutralizes the stomach acid in the strong areas so acidophils they grow optimally at a ph which ranges between 8 to 10 and these microbes thrive in the basic environment such as uh, alkaline soils and the lakes for example the vibrium and the bacillus these are very important so they can grow in the high salt concentration so you can see the effect of the growth of the pH on the growth of the effect of the pH on the growth of the bacteria at very extremes of the pH the bacteria die it remains between the in the optimal range.